Sketchstorm Drawing channel. Today I will show you how a designer typically draws in a Photoshop, from sketching to refining lines, adding shadows, highlights and final details. Along the way I will share useful tips and tricks to improve your digital art. Ok, so let's go! We will start with a classic sketch today. I will be drawing a side view because it's quicker and simpler, especially for beginners. First, we will roughly outline the basic shape and add some details, like we will place different materials. But don't worry about finishing it completely at this stage. We can always refine the surface and other details later on when we will render it. For more precise drawing of the shape, I will use the pen tool. This tool is amazing for creating sharp, clean edges and outlines. It allows me to draw curves and straight lines with precision, which is essential when I want to define the overall shape of the object clearly. The beauty of the pen tool is that I can easily adjust archer points and control the curves so everything stays smooth and accurate as I draw. Once I defined the shape, I will fill it with a base color, like yellow, just to give it a clear outline and a visual reference for the structure. This helps me stay focused on our overall composition without worrying about finer details just yet. I'm just using this color as a placeholder for the main surface of the object. Next. I will start cutting out any holes or negative spaces within the shape. For instance, if the object has a gap or an opening. I will use the pen tool to create a clean sharp cut. This gives the design more dimensions and helps separate different sections of the object visually. Then I will start separating the various areas using different colors to represent the materials. For example, if a product has a metal part or a plastic part or let's say fabric part, I will use a distinct colors for each materials. This helps me stay organized and gives me a clearer view of how the materials will interact later when I add shading and textures. I don't need to worry about making this separation final just yet, as I will adjust them later based on the rendering process. But for now, these colors act as a map for the different materials, so I know exactly where each surface and texture will go as I continue with the shading and detailing. As we were shading, there's another technique I like to use to enhance the form of the object, adding light along the outline. Since the object is surrounded, this helps emphasize the curvature and adds more depth. This effect gives the product a more 3D appearance, making it feel less flat and more tangible. It's all about playing with the light and shadow to give the illusion of the volume. Reflection is also a crucial aspect in this process, especially when we were dealing with the metallic surfaces or reflecting materials. Light doesn't just hit the object from the top, it bounces and reflects even from below. So, when shading a metallic object, we need to keep in mind that light will reflect not only from the top, but also from the underside of the sur surface. This makes the shading and the highlights more complex and gives the object a more realistic, polished feel. Throughout this whole process, I'm constantly experimenting with different materials and techniques. One tool I use a lot is the level adjustment. It's perfect for fine-tuning the overall lighting. By adjusting the levels, I can either brighten up certain areas of a material or darken them or to add a contrast. It's a matter of playing around with the light and shadow until everything feels balanced. Additionally, as the drawing progresses, I start adding smaller details like creases wrinkles or other imperfections on the surface. These little touches might seem subtle, but they make a huge difference in breaking up a flat surface and adding realism.
it also enhances depth and adds a sense of texture. For example, if the object has any faults or slight bumps, these can be exaggerated slightly to help the piece and stand out and look less smooth. Adding these details is a great way to give the drawing more character and make it feel less artificial. This process is all about defining the right balance, whether it's between light and shadow or texture or smoothness, to bring the piece to life. Alright, now that we've got our basic shapes and colors set, it's time to dive into some more detailed work. The next step is adding patterns and textures, which really brings the design to the life. I start by adding some air vents in a free stripe pattern. I like using it because it not only adds visual interest, but it also gives the object a sense of dynamism, almost like it's meant to be functional or high-tech. This pattern breaks up smoother areas and adds some rhythm to the design, which makes it feel more complex. As I'm doing this, I will also look for opportunities to introduce small realistic details, like screw holes. These tiny touches might seem subtle, but they make a huge difference in how the design is perceived. The screw holes help make the feel object like it's not just an abstract shape. It gives a sense of construction that it's built not just drawn. Adding these small elements, it's all about grounding the design and making the feel more tangible. Next up, we will play around with the logo and patterns. This step is a bit more creative and uh, personalized. Whether it's a simple brand logo or a more intricate pattern, interrogating these elements is a key to adding character to the object. I will experiment with, diff with these different placement and sizes until I find the right balance. It's all about making sure that the logo or any branding doesn't overpower the design but still feels like an essential part of it. The way it's incorporated adds a whole new layer to the overall look. Now let's move on to shadows. Shadows are incredibly important in making the object feel real, but I like to add a little twist to this part of the process instead of just a typical shadow that sits under the object. I create the illusion that the object is levitating slightly above the surface by positioning the shadow just beneath it and make it soft, softly and airy. I give the object a sense of weightlessness. This floating effect not only makes it feel more dynamic, but it also adds a touch of elegance and uh, makes the object a little bit more futuristic, otherworldly. It's one of the my signature techniques that really helps bring the design to life without making it feel too heavy on the ground, you know. Well, uh, at this stage we are really just fine-tuning these details, adjusting the materials and, you know, playing with the light and shadow. Every change, no matter how small, adds something to the overall composition. Like, you know, the goal is to keep experimenting with different techniques, adjusting until everything feels cohesive. So, you will notice that a lot of this process is all about trial and you know, searching the surfaces, whether it's adding pattern, refining shadows, or tweaking the surfaces' textures. It's all about finding the right balance. No. Each step adds depth, complexity, and realism to find the final like, result for this product. I'm also testing a few minor changes during the process, but that doesn't mean I will definitely use them. It's just a part of the experiment to see if they will improve the drawing. Sometimes it's good to try new things, even if they are small adjustments, just to see how they affect the overall look. But we can't forget that it's easy to overdo it. Sometimes the best thing to do is step back and stop before we overcomplicate the drawing. Just don't overkill your sketch, you know. Knowing when to stop is a key, because overloading a piece with too many changes can take away from its original impact.
it's all about the balance sometimes less is more all right i think we are getting close to the end now i hope this video has been helpful and that you've learned something new if you like it don't forget to give a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you will never miss any future content Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Ciao!